What's up, everyone? Welcome to Clown World News. We got a bunch of ridiculous news today. Some of it's crazy. Some of it's sad. Most of it's actually crazy, in fact, because it's 2020. So let's just dive right in. First thing, we got Mark Judson for Congress with a check mark with this brilliant idea. Not proposing policy, just seeing where people are all are on this. In 2021, after Trump is gone, and we will be able to tell who 90% of his supporters are via social media records, should we fire all of them from any federal jobs to include the military in order to protect the nation? What? Somebody running for Congress with a check mark on Twitter posted this unironically. What? You know, like, I don't like liberals and radical leftists, but I would never think this. This is some scary shit. How do you guys in one breath say that, like, Donald Trump is a fascist? And then in the other part of the sentence, you drop some dumb shit like this. This is fucking psychotic. 316 retweets. I wonder how many, though, were people being like, what the fuck? Anyways, fuck you, Mark Judson. I hope you don't make it into Congress. From your little thumbnail, you look like Kevin from The Office. All right, whatever, moving on. A California fire sparked by a gender reveal party has grown to more than 10,000 acres. Well, shit, people, couldn't you just send a text? Do we really need the pyrotechnics to figure out whether your kid's going to stand up or sit down to pee? In 2020, you don't even know anymore if they're going to have to sit down or stand up. Regardless, I used to have the, I have these shoes. Dude, I don't like how these ads know so much about me. The Jordan 1 is probably the dopest shoe, regardless, but I got the Shattered Back Boys and yeah, whatever, we're moving on. Well, we got fires, uh, California just can't stop catching on fire, goodness gracious. The balls of California. The fire was caused by a smoke generating pyrotechnic device used at a party on Saturday morning in El Dorado Ranch Park in Yucaipa, about 70 miles east of Los Angeles. Cal Fire investigators determined. Could we not? Could we, could we not burn down California every other week? 10,000 acres? That's a tenth of where Winnie the Pooh lives. I'm trying to get to the top with these ads. This is so obnoxious. CNN. Come on. Look at. Come on. All right, we don't need to see that. Oh, come on. All right, whatever. We'll move on. Fuck you, CNN. So, good news for Australian bros. Uh, AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. Huge setback for Australia's hopes of having a totalitarian di dictatorship that makes mandatory vaccines. Australia's COVID vaccine hopes have been dealt a major setback after a suspected serious adverse reaction in a trial participant. Let me read that again so you can digest it. Australia's COVID vaccine hopes have been dealt a major setback after a suspected serious adverse reaction in a trial participant. Meaning, oh uh, yeah, it's bad things have. Oh, we got, we got, we got a video. Let's check it. Giant AstraZeneca and the University of Oxford is being tested at dozens of sites around the world. The adverse reaction, which AstraZeneca says is an unexplained illness, is believed to have affected a single participant in the UK. A suspected serious adverse reaction means the participant it infected somebody in the UK, but it's it's Australia. What? What? What are you? Who are you guys stabbing with these things? <laughs> Can you not just keep it a little more consolidated? Jeez, Louise may require hospitalisation. It could result in a life-threatening illness or even death. So it's not clear exactly what this safety event was, how long this pause could potentially last, or you know, how effective, how much of an effect this will really have on the trial going forward. But uh, it's down about five percent here. The trial. Wait, 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 wait. How much of an effect? You know you want to get your vaccine safety news from a segment called Fast Money. Effect this will really have on the trial going forward, but. Uh... Lamau, AstraZeneca. You sound like a Greek philosopher. <laughs> Dr. Nick Coatsworth said the setback needs to be investigated. Well, no fucking shit, Sherlock. <laughs> Was this the guy? 
The federal government has signed off on a 1.7 billion supply and production agreement for the vaccine. Jeez, you guys just don't care about numbers. What is this? How the Oxford COVID-19 vaccine works? Chimpanzee adenovirus modified? What what do we do? What do we we're putting it into a DNA, you're cutting it, and then you're putting that into a MacBook? And then that goes into the chimpanzee Chad virus? What is hap what are you guys doing? How do you make, I guess a chimpanzee is pretty chad. Have you ever seen one of those fight on Joe Rogan? They could rip you in half, Jamie. Pull that up. I don't have a Jamie because I'm low rent. But if you do support investigative journalism, you can check out the description. I do have a Patreon. Regardless, forget this. This is, we're done with this one. This guy is following me. This guy is the Mona Lisa of ads. Everywhere you go, it's not about being better than others. It's about never being satisfied and striving for more. Credit Susie. Pioneers of progress. I'm, I'm caught in their ad. Their ad got me. Fuck you guys. <laughs> Moving on. All right, you heard about the UK teens getting charged with a hate crime for their, their bad joke on Snapchat? Well, apparently that bullshit also exists in the United States. But this time not for a joke and poor taste. This time for an actual crime. Hate crime charges announced for women arrested in conjunction to MAGA hat theft outside of Wilmington, D.N.C. Ooh. Two women charged with stealing a Make America Great Again hat from a boy seated outside the Democratic National Convention in Wilmington have had their charges upgraded to hate crimes, the Delaware Department, blah, blah, blah. All right, again, I think it's fine to just make it a regular crime, though these, these bitches do look awfully hateful. Uh, you got the you got the stock mask and you got a cool one. What is it? Is that just your hoodie? You thought maybe I could wear the mask during the mugshot? Is that what is that what you thought, Catherine or Cameron or Amy? I don't know what your fucking name is. Regardless, uh, don't don't steal from people. Free speech, free assembly, and free expression are sacred, no matter whether we agree with the opinions expressed or and especially when we don't. That is true today as it was when the Bill of Rights was ratified. Our division of civil rights and public trust will continue to defend everyone's fundamental rights. What irony, right? In the United Kingdom, you can get a hate crime for expressing your free speech. In the United States, you can get a hate crime for getting in the way of somebody's free speech. What a world. <laughs> what a fucking world we live in. But I mean, to be fair, we did we did leave, you know, Great Britain and London so that we could come to the United States and have like a better system. But I don't know. I don't. I don't think that they need a hate crime. We don't need to upgrade it. I, don't, I think we can just get rid of the whole hate crime thing in general. If you have any idea of how to logically defend the idea of a hate crime, put it in my comments. I'll, I'll gladly listen to it. But I don't. I don't get the point. So regardless, moving on. The ACLU, ooh, Samuel Crankshaw. The ACLU's Crankshaw alerted people that Nick Sandman would be attending the college and expressing outrage that the school would admit someone with his opposing views. He warns that this kid is dangerous, dangerous, and has no intention to learn. ACLU, did you not get the memo? Don't touch this kid, Nick Sandman. He made bank off you dumbasses. You wanna you wanna pay him again? I don't know how big are this kid's pockets, man. I don't think his bank account can count all those commas. We're gonna fuck him up though. Fuck up some commas. Samuel Crankshaw, you look like a douchebag today. I don't mean your picture. I mean your actions, because I'm not judging you based on your appearance. I'm judging you on the merit of your character, and it's douchey. So we're moving on. We got this brilliant piece from CNNBC. The budget breakdown of a 25-year-old who makes $100,000 a year and is excellent with money. Okay, I don't, first of all, I don't know many people in general who make by themselves $100,000 a year, let alone any 25-year-olds who make $100,000 a year. But look at this, look at this little monthly spending Health insurance, groceries, dining out, utilities, transportation, cell phone, house cleaner, internet. Nice that internet's so cheap. Rent. Yeah, that makes sense. Donations. 
Six hundred and fifteen dollars to donations? What the fuck do you think? What do you think this is? I feel like I'm somebody like I'm. I'm literally asking for donations in my description. It's like when I when I used to live in Chicago, I'd walk the streets to classes and stuff, and people like the homeless people would come up. They'd be like, "Yo, you got any money?" Be like, "Bro, I I don't. I really wish I did. I don't have money. Like you're asking me for money. I I fucking don't have any money." So I think this is just a bit unrealistic, but perhaps CNN, CN, CNBC is trying to paint the picture that, look, other people are, are donating so much, perhaps you should donate to one of our favorite sponsored charities, such as Black Lives Matter and the DNC party, Joe Biden's campaign, or shit, you like burning money? Just throw it into Bernie Sanders. All right, we're moving on. Regardless, Halloween is canceled. That devil worshiping holiday. No more, says LA, because everyone knows LA is known for being anti devil worship. Door to door trick or treating is not allowed because it can be very difficult to maintain proper social distancing on porches and at front doors, especially in neighborhoods that are popular with trick or treaters. Well, shit, can we still order a pizza? What about Uber Eats? Well, can we do that whole Uber Eats thing where, like, I knock on the door? And I'll leave my candy bowl out, and then you open the door, you put the candy in, and you close it. Can we do, come on, can we get something going on for these kids? How are they supposed to get addicted to something that's way more powerful than cocaine at a young age? Like sugar. Trunk or treating events where children go from car to car instead of door to door to receive treats are also not allowed. Well, that just sounds sketchy. I didn't know that was a thing. Gatherings or parties with non-household members are not permitted even if they are conducted outdoors. Ah, uh, now you're just getting... Come on. Come on, LA. Carnivals, festivals, live entertainment, and haunted house attractions are not allowed. Alright, so here's something that I learned from one of the coolest kids I knew growing up. He said, I hate people who are too cool to have fun at a haunted house. And he was right, you know, right at that ripe age where you're like middle school to high school and you're like, I'm a badass, I'm an adult, nothing's, I'm so jaded, everything sucks. Oh, that haunted house, yeah, I'll go, but it's not going to scare me. I don't get scared. The, you paid money, bro, the point is to be scared. Allow yourself to have fun at the haunted house, that's the whole point. But what is permitted? Online parties, contests, car parades that comply, Halloween movie nights, at drive-in theaters, Halloween-themed meals at outdoor restaurants, Halloween-themed art installations, dressing up homes and yards with Halloween-themed decorations. Well, I'm glad you let us do that. I don't live in L.A., though. Wear a cloth face covering when outside your home and around others that are not part of your household. Well, I was going to wear a mask, but I guess I'll just... Well, everybody gets to be a doctor. That's it. No, everybody... <laughs> everyone is either a doctor or they're a Chinese immigrant because... Before all of this, the only people I saw wear masks were Chinese people in San Jose who, who had the big, they had big sun hats and they had sunglasses and they had the masks. I don't know, maybe they were just preparing ahead of time. I don't know what their deal is. I, I don't know. I know lots of really smart Chinese people, so I'm not trying to talk shit on Chinese people. It sucks that you ever have to say that. Like, obviously, I'm not talking shit on any specific race. I'm talking shit on specific people. Not because of their genetics, but because of their actions. So it should be understood. So we got some funny Donald Trump tweets. Let's check this out. Donald Trump. What we got here? What was I looking for? This one. Police chief. This isn't very funny, but police chief and most of the police in Rochester, New York, have resigned. The Democrat mayor and, of course, Governor Cuomo, Cuomo, Cuomo have no idea what to do. New York State is a mess. No money, high taxes, and crime, and everyone's fleeing. November 3rd, we can fix it. I'm just saying. Donald Trump is just saying. Maybe you could, maybe, you know, maybe you vote a little red. And then suddenly we could, like, I don't know, do something. <laughs> maybe we can, maybe we can't. I don't know. I just know that New York looks a lot like the day after tomorrow from the movie New York. Check this out. Spotify deleted all the Alex Jones appearances and other guests here from Joe Rogan's podcast archives. So if you didn't know, Joe Rogan moved from YouTube to Spotify. And part of the deal was supposed that Alex Jones could be there. But Spotify went, Spotify went ahead and deleted all of Alex Jones' interviews and a bunch of other guests too. But why is this relevant? 
Why is this relevant? Because... Donald Trump retweeted it. Lamau. Don't know why. I guess he's a fan of Alex Jones or Joe Rogan's podcast. Or perhaps, you know, we'll throw this angle out there. Because what Alex Jones has to say involves pretty much shit-talking all of Donald Trump's opponents. So, I mean... And if, if Alex Jones gets censored from Spotify, it makes it look like there really is a global conspiracy to shut down that line of thinking. So, you know, there's that. But we were looking for... Uh, what, what, what were we looking for? I think that was it. Is that what we were looking for? Yeah. Whatever. We're moving on. So, like, Donald Trump, remember the whole thing about him not knowing who the good guys were in World War II? Well, check this out. This is a little bit to do with that. Biden chipped away our jobs, threw open our borders, and sent our youth to fight in these crazy, endless wars. And one of the reasons the military, I'm not saying the military is in love with me, the soldiers are. The top people in the Pentagon probably aren't because they want to do nothing but fight wars so that all of those wonderful companies that make the bombs and make the planes and make everything else stay happy. But, uh, we're getting out of here. You know how we're doing. Damn! Shout out Politico. I'm going to link to all this shit so I don't get in trouble. But, damn, did Donald Trump just call out the military industrial complex? Let's get Eisenhower on the screen. M I C. Can we get Eisenhower? Yeah! All right, we like, it's only two minutes. Let's check this out. Listen to. The councils of government. And then we'll end it with this. Oh, it's got epic music. I apologize for the epic music. But this is act this is Bern literally Bernie Sanders. <laughs> Bernie Sanders' YouTube account. I had no idea. That's that's great. That's choice. So check this out. This is what Trump was roughly talking about. But let's just hear who, the, who first warned us about it. In the councils of government, we must guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought by the military-industrial complex. Oh, they're gonna edit it. Ah, oh, they're editing it. He basically just talks about the military-industrial com complex and how there's gonna be, like, war profiteers and whatnot. But Bernie Sanders wanted to edit it so he can make a point. But the point is, is that Trump was talking about it. So, um, it's just funny. It's all so funny. Because they, they made that whole article about how Trump was, he called the soldiers suckers. And then instead of like doubling down what she did and say like, yo, that's nonsense. I think he has a tweet somewhere around here where he's like, the Democrats together with the corrupt fake news media have launched a massive disinformation campaign, the likes of which have never been seen before. They will say anything like the recent lies about me in the military and hope that it sticks. But MAGA gets it. Yeah, and then he talks about how the top brass, not the soldiers, but the top brass, a lot of them just want to keep fighting endless wars because it makes a lot of money for the people who make the guns, the bombs, the bullets. And then this is for sure going to be grabbed up by the, the media to just be like spun into some like, either he's a hypocrite or either he's like, but you also supported the military. The, Oh, here we go. Trump's Monday comments create a false narrative, said Brian Callen. Wait, really? Brian Callen? That's, that can't be the Brian Callen. I thought he had, like, some weird Me Too allegations. And an, an analyst with Capital Alpha Partners, he pointed out not only the amount of defense spending in Trump's administration, but also his repeated attempts to showcase military equipment during national celebrations. It's bizarrely inconsistent, Callen said. It's because uh, he's not fighting an endless war. He's just defending the border. That's my take. And I'm all about using the military in a defensive action. I think that fighting wars in the Middle East, et cetera, all of Vietnam is, is a bad idea. No, no good. No bueno. Maybe they needed to happen. I don't know. Maybe Justin Trudeau is Fidel Castro's son. I don't, maybe Angela Merkel is Hitler's granddaughter. I don't know. I've heard it said. <laughs> now take those with a big grain of salt. Everything else here, take it with normal grain of salt. Those last things, big grain of salt. Maybe. Maybe, maybe. But yeah, that's that's the news today. That's what we got going on in the world. 
again, I'm sure there's a lot more, but the news is is silly, guys. Guys, the news, the news is silly. If you don't stop it every now and then, you you're gonna get lost in a rabbit hole. And you gotta remember that that's a look at that graph of the donations and the, the grocery spending. The news needs to be a small chunk of your circle of your big pie. Also, you can make pizza pie. Forget regular pie. If you take yeast, I, I'm I'm literally gonna explain how you can use yeast to make dough. But I, there's recipes. This has been known for thousands of years. But I just learned how to do it the other day. I just learned how to make pizza dough with yeast, and I'm super stoked about it. I make calzones. I make pizza. I feel like the main problem with pizza is the is the preservatives from eating all those totinos. I used to eat totinos when I was super duper duper poor, but now I can afford to make flour or to get flour. I can't afford my own plantation yet to have the flour grind and process. I don't. I digress. I'm sorry. I'm not talking about the news anymore. I was talking about cooking recipes. But hey, doesn't everybody hate how when you try to find the recipe, it starts with like, well, the first time when my grandmother raised me, um, after my father passed away and took me to the orphanage, and then we only had mutt soup, but it was my favorite mutt soup. So I'm gonna tell you how to make it like grandma. The nun that I call grandma, I, I'm sorry. Be a good person. Call your mom. Don't fall for bullshit news. Take everything you hear with a grain of salt. Eat good. Exercise. Find skills that distract you from all this noise. Call your mom. Peace.